Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Here we go. Another episode as I am making my way home from Europe, and I pray that it will encourage you to mature in your exclusive loyalty to the Father. Oh, how important this is. So I talk a little bit about what it means to debrief with the Lord when you are leaving one um, place, moving to another, and sharing thoughts about uh, this amazing faithfulness that we have the opportunity to share in and to remain loyal and faithful specifically to Him. So I love you all. And uh, listen up, and I pray that if it encourages you, you'll encourage others to take a listen. Here we go. This is an episode right now. I'm, I'm recording this on Sunday. You probably won't see it drop until Monday. And I will be, hopefully, in the air, flying home to... Uh, Frankfurt first, and then from Frankfurt on into Houston. But right now, I am in Wrocław, Poland, the birthplace of Diedrich Bonhoeffer. And I am in the transition days of when I leave the team and the school is done, and I begin to, uh, in a time-released way, make my way to uh, the airport. So today, I am having a few hours to debrief with the Lord. Maybe you might want to look at what is a debrief, right? That's when you come in from an intense time and then you need to talk about things and you need to process those things uh, so that you don't lose the deposits, that you don't just go, oh, great, okay, that's over. And you never pray over the seed, the deposit, pray over those things that have just happened, hear what the Lord tells you about them, uh, any plans that you need to make coming out of them that will keep what he's doing moving. And then you also begin to uh, focus on re-entry of where you are headed. So it is good. I don't always have this, but this is great to be able to have today. And in the States, today is Mother's Day. And so uh, even though by the time you hear this, Mother's Day will be done, but I do hope Uh, that all the mothers out there on uh, many levels of many different kinds, that you will have had a very strong and rich day. So when you're hearing this, I'm flying home, and I will continue to debrief and continue to prepare and think about what the Lord has said, what he has shown us, what's actually happened. Because how many of you know there were things he told me a few weeks ago that have now happened? And we're stepping in and continuing in real-time engagement with him. And so I wanted to say also, thank you so very much. As of today, uh, we've had 2.3 thousand views uh, for my conversation with Bernardo Schmidt uh, out of Inger, Germany. So if you're one of those that have viewed uh, that conversation, then thank you so much. If you haven't yet then go right ahead and be sure to subscribe to Nancy McCready YouTube channel because these are going to continue to uh, show up and uh, I pray other things also. But for sure, we are making this a part of the uh, anchor points of our YouTube channel. You find there all the podcasts. So the conversations, the interviews, if you will, are called Tent Talk Conversations. That's different than Tent Talk, the podcast, which is audio. But the conversations are where you can see us, and there's a greater length to it and a much more interaction. So I want to say thank you so very, very much for taking the time to check that out. And I pray that it has been encouraging to you because part of the reason I want to do them is that you will begin to hear in the very simple uh, way Uh, the true steps, not really steps, but just the way that things unfold, that there's nothing magical or mystical happening. We are hearing 
the Father. We are stepping out. We're doing what he tells us. He connects us with people because what we're really doing, my friends, is discovering what he has already written down. We are not making this up. We are not earning a destiny. Hear me loud and clear. You are not earning a destiny, hoping that you do well enough and that you're relevant enough and slick enough and cute enough and funny enough, you know, to gain a following. My friends, the Father has written something down over you before the foundations of the world. And it is only possible, you are only possible in Him. And this is why we must come into that deep place of rest and cease from our strivings and these works that, that do nothing so that we can enter into the one work that Jesus told them in John six twenty six through 29. In the Amplified Classic, they kept saying, what must we do to do the works of God? And he said, here is your work. Trust in the one whom he has sent. Oh, that sounds easy until you try it. When you have been your entire life trusting in self, trying to trust in other people, trust in whatever, and then Jesus says, here's the one thing. Now give up on all of that, turn to me, and trust me. Oh, you're going to find, my friends, there is no amount of human faith that will ever trust in Jesus. Now, it'll trust in the Jesus that you make up but not the one true and living Jesus, because the only faith that believes in him is his very own. And he's made that a part of your inheritance that he says here, have the faith of God. And in Galatians 2.20, the life that I live, I, I live by faith in the Son of God, the faith of the Son of God. And there's a very interesting scripture, Luke 18.8, where he says, will I find faith in the earth? I believe it's in the context of when I return. Will I find faith in the earth? Will I obtain fidelity? Will there be loyalty to me in the earth? Not just activity, not just nice, good things, but I'm talking about an exclusive allegiance to him. My friends, this has been a huge part of the word that I continued to speak at the school. Um, And it's been stirring in me. And I know that means, first and foremost, that that the Lord is calling me to that deeper and deeper. Will it be as he has written down? Will it be not that I love helping people? I love discipleship. I love this. I, I, I. (laughs) No, Father, you have made me a lover of you. I love you. I'm attached to you. You have made me one to you. You called me to yourself. And to identify with the Father, my friends, at deepening levels is so uh, intense, so rich, yes, so amazing, but oh, the challenge that he challenges us and provokes as he continues to say, move with me. You know, will he obtain fidelity in the earth? Sons who are attached to him like Jesus was. Jesus had friends, but his friends did not lead his life. He wasn't looking to fit in with friends. Now, this is a maturing. Listen, this is for maturing sons. And when you really look at Jesus and the way he continued on with his father, he continued to remain, abide, and to stay at every growth moment. Every decision brought him to that place. Will I stay with the father? You can see this in many different places. Matthew twenty six fifty three. Jesus says, you know, I can ask the father to take me out of here. There are 80,000 angels waiting to, to completely rescue me. But you see, Jesus wasn't inter- interested in a rescue. He was, he was here for a resurrection, my friends, because he was here to bring you home to the father. And if we keep looking for rescues, we keep looking for an escape hatch. We keep looking to stay small and, and babyish childish. If you're going to be childlike, you can be a full-grown, mature son and be childlike in your trust towards the Father. But that does not mean, my friends, that we are going to remain babies. There isn't the inner 
child per se. It's the inner man, the scripture says. And yet Jesus was full in his faith, his loyalty to the Father when his friends attempted to bring him false comfort. Mm -mm. He, He was not in need of that. He was not going to find his comfort in others, you know, telling him, oh, it's okay, you know, the Father is just requiring too much of you. No, no, no. My friends, we must allow the life of Christ. You see, there's the cross, its way of life. There is the death side of the cross and the life side of the cross. And this we must come into. And we want to be those who remain faithful to him, not just faithful to people. Yes, that should be the outgrowth of my faithfulness to him will be to be faithful to people. But I am not first loyal to people, first loyal to him. And this will always, my friends, when Jesus says, you know, uh, if any man would be my disciple, let him take up his cross and follow me. And, uh, you know, but if you don't hate mother, brother, sister in your own life, you cannot be my disciple. That's strong words. And there are places where you'll see this is described as in comparison to loving him, it is going to appear to others as though you hate them. Why? Because they don't control you any longer. They are not your first line of loyalty. They are not your first line of influence. You are no longer, um, you know, at every family function, because if the father says, I have need of you here, uh, we're going here and you go there, right? And you have a family that doesn't understand that, doesn't grasp that, doesn't encourage that and sees that as something weird and radical. It's going to appear to them. It just You're just simply following, you know, the Lord in his way of life and then in the specific instruction that he's giving you. It appears to them as though you hate them. You're not for us. And there comes a point when you realize that's correct. You are not number one. He is. Now, if he is, you will be more loving and more honoring by what he means by that, more loving and more honoring than ever before. Because when you are doing what the family or people or leaders or bosses or whomever thinks that you should, right, so that you will gain from them something that you want. You do understand that's not how the life of Christ lives. So we have to let God define everything, my friends. He defines himself. He defines love. He defines life. I mean, he is love. He is life, right? So on this Here We Go episode, as I'm attempting to share with you where I'm at, what's going on, I'm also encouraging you as I am being encouraged In real time, with every fresh move of God, it requires fresh loyalty to God. That is not original to me. Oh, how I wish it was. But this is something that I was taught and shown in the scripture years ago, and it set a course, it cut a rut in my thinking that has uh, served me very well over the years and has, has caused me by the fidelity of Christ in me that has been nurtured and developed to guard and to protect that which God put within me, the assignment he has given me. The, um, uh, my calling is to him, but giftings uh, are to serve his purposes. They're not for me, they're for uh, others. And um, so, uh, and the assignments can shift and change, but there is a major thread, I'd, I'd say a rope, Uh, a beam that runs through all of those assignments is that they're what the father is wanting. And that has to be nurtured and cultivated, my friends. You have to face the fear that others will think that you're making too big of yourself or that, uh, that, you know, you'll discount it and say, uh, I I don't want anybody to make fun of me or I'll look foolish. My friends, what the father has put within you You have the stewardship of that to hold true to him. And yes, what he has shown you, given you, 
you know, this month of May 2024, I'm celebrating um, 10 years uh, of being in Europe. Uh, 2014, May of 2014, uh, we went to Kashalin, Poland. And big doors were open. They didn't look big at the time, but oh, how they have proven to be big doors. And recently, there was a, I, I mentioned this on the last Here We Go, there was a prophetic ministry that released a prophetic word over Poland that is almost identical to what God has shown me and many others. Because it's God. It's not us. It's not like I have a word for Poland. No, I heard what the Father said, and I've been releasing that word, but we've been living that simply under the radar. And it is amazing, uh, you know, that <laughs> this sounds so strange, but God's faithfulness to uh, his own word, uh, to what he has done, because all of this, my friend, is his idea. Hmm? You're discovering what the Father has always wanted, and he's invited you in as a son, and he has said, there are portions of this that I want to realize for myself in this generation with you. My friend, it's not your significance. It's not your value, because if you're not exclusively attached to the Lord, to the Father, to Holy Spirit, when they tell you lay it down or shift or give it away or release it or whatever, uh, you're going to grasp onto it like it's your life, if it's your life. But if he's your life, then you grip him. And you realize you've had the privilege of stewarding what the Father has wanted. And I pray that we continue to be faithful to him and his desire for Poland, Germany, Austria, the United States, and any other nation that he sends us in, and that we will be um, a strong and clean uh, partner to others and assist them in any way that we possibly can. We don't want to swallow up other ministries. right? We, uh, are we coming alongside? What is our portion? Because no one has the entire thing, and no one can carry out their assignment usually all by themselves. You see, God is at work, my friends, and God is on the move. And so are we. And right now, as I'm on the move, headed home, I'm listening to him. And sometimes it takes a little while to quiet your insides. And, you know, that's why I'm just a few hours on my own. And I'm going to switch hotels this afternoon. I've got some appointments. Um, you know, because you continue. You stay in the rhythm of cultivating and oftentimes through conversations that, that continue uh, the work. These things do not happen by accident nor magic, nor really as much from the platform as they do, um, you know, I believe the kingdom moves at the speed of trusting God and conversations with uh, your partners, <laughs> those whom God has connected you with. But ultimately, my friends, we must have exclusive allegiance to him. Not to the work, not even first to other people, but to him. Because it is for him. And uh, he has made it about us. Let me just close on this. Many, many times, if we're not careful, we keep taking Christian lessons from the devil. And my friends, I'm not some martyr in a corner trying to, you know, oh, it's not about me. <laughs> well... The Father has made it about me. The Bible says he can't take his eyes off of me, that he came for me, that he's returned me to himself. He wants sons. He wants me. He wants you, the you that he made in Christ. And he wants us to mature, that there might be uh, a profound enjoyment of each other as his will is accomplished. So, my friends, the reason that I can make it about him and make it about others is because I know the Father has made it about me as far as in our private life together. So he's feeding me consistently as I stay leaned in, and, and he keeps me. I let him keep me. I want him to keep me. 
tend to me, love me, nurture me, cultivate, discipline, train, right? He does all of that. That's what he did in Jesus. Jesus did not live as a martyr in a corner, shriveled up, saying, oh, it's not about me. The reason he didn't have to talk about himself all the time, and he talked about the Father and all of that, is because he was tended to by the Father in his abiding, in his remaining and staying with the Father. And he could hear the Father. He knew the Father. He, he said, I don't even move upon my own authority, but the authority of my Father. The oneness had a full expression, my friends, a full expression. Don't, don't take Christian lessons from the devil and be martyred. Let the Father tend it to you and let yourself mature in his love. And begin to assume the responsibility of a maturing son and move forward full, full, and then pour out and be filled again and pour out and filled again. Oh, my friends, we must know his way of life. So as I am headed home and wherever you may be headed, I pray exclusive allegiance, exclusive loyalty to him, which will cause us to be true lovers of God. We will love ourselves properly, and we will love. We will love others, first in the household of faith and the world. And uh, we, we must walk in this now. All right? I look forward to this week unfolding as I return home, hearing from some of you, and I pray if there's anything that you need, you will let me know. All right? I will talk to you soon. All right, I'm stepping in here at the end of the episode to say, if you have not yet subscribed to Nancy McCready YouTube channel, please go and do that. Check out all the podcasts are there. You will find Tent Talk Conversations, the interviews that I'm able to do with many of our partners and sons uh, in many different locations. You will be able to find on there some of our archive videos. I pray that it will be an encouragement to you and a tool and a resource for you as you continue to pursue him. Check out, if you haven't already, my most recent Tent Talk conversation with Bernardo Schmidt. It's already had about 2.3 thousand views, and we pray that it will continue. So subscribe to Tent Talk and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right. We love you all. Thanks.